not been as good as you have been about uh, wearing sunscreen. Um, so I have to probably address this retroactively. Can I just like rub some rapamycin and ABT263 on my skin and it's all good? It probably would work. You have to be careful because rapamycin suppresses the immune system, remember. Right. And right now, th those drugs are not available as far as I know for topical treatment. Uh, but actually, Baroni, Dr. Baroni, then took that finding and then used that little skin explant, beta gal stain, which is blue, to look for peptides, small little proteins that we talked about in, in the last episode. Which one of those 700 and something peptides, if any, had age reversal effects? Got rid of that blue senescent stain and reversed the clock. And out of those 700 and something peptides, she found a few. There were about 20 that looked good. And one of them she's actually put into a product uh, that she sent me to try the other day. It's called One Skin. And I, I, I'm not an advisor to this group or anything, but it did seem to work. It looked just as good as Retin-A, which is the, the leading product that is used to reduce fine lines and wrinkles too. Um, but I know she's developing additional peptides to put into her cream, not just this one that is starting to show some efficacy in human clinical trials. And the, the thought process behind having a peptide in a cream is, is what? So we don't know exactly how this peptide makes the skin younger, but one of the downstream effects, one of the benefits, certainly is involving the ColA1 gene that makes the protein collagen, which we've known for over 50 years to be an important component of younger skin, making it more flexible and thicker. Collagen, of course, is a really super popular supplement to put in beauty products right now. It's a protein, but it starts to attenuate after our mid-20s. Right. Well, it's when, you're, when we're young, it's the most abundant protein in the body. It holds together our bones and our skin. This is why like babies are all chubby and beautiful and plump, right? Yeah, it's a wonderful protein, but we don't make enough of it as we get older. And that's why beauty products in particular want to boost that production. But you can also smear it on, put it in powders, put it in drinks, take it as a pill. Energy drinks have it in it. The question though is, is it useful? Is eating collagen going to be good? Well, one thing I can say for sure is that collagen's made up of a lot of amino acids. You know, to get the right ratio of, col of collagen amino acids from those products. Whether or not the collagen itself makes it into your bloodstream after being degraded in your stomach. Like and your in stomach the gut. acids. Yeah, yeah. so that there's a big debate about whether these products are working by being broken down and rebuilt or actually make it into the body as an intact peptide of string of amino acids. And I would say the jury's well and truly still out on those things. It is fair to say that if you, as long as you pick a safe collagen product, there's likely not a lot of harm that can come from it. Not this. at all. There's no, there's no harm in taking collagen and probably what it's making sure is that you don't have any deficiencies in the amino acids you need to make this most abundant protein in the body. What we know right now is that there's probably more benefit from retinol or vitamin C in terms of um, protecting your skin. Well, yeah, vitamin C is, is good for overall body's health. It's um, essential for, it's an antioxidant. Retin-A, though, is one of the most important aspects for preventing and reversing fine lines and wrinkles in the skin. And these, these substances actually create collagen down the line, right? Right. These retinoids have been shown for many years to boost the production of collagen. That, that's clear. They also do other things. They increase the growth of the epidermis and the striatum corneum, which are the important parts of the, the skin, make it thicker. They also can actually lower skin pigmentation by about 60%. A lot of people want to have even colored skin. They make fibroblasts grow, basically stimulating cell growth, which is really important. They lower the lipids, so that's why it's often used as a defense against acne. And in fact, you were telling me earlier that you've used that before. When I was a kid, yeah. Yeah. Um, it dried out my skin something awful though. I mean, it makes you like super susceptible to sunlight. So you have to wear, uh, you have to wear sunscreen. When well, you that, that's true today. If you put it on your skin as an adult, you have to be careful f from the sun, but mostly you end up with dry skin. So you have to make sure you're moisturizing while you use the, the retinol products. And there's another thing that's important about these. Uh, there are what are called MMPs, this metalloproteases that break down the skin and you want to inhibit those as well, which is what retinols do. Actually, what they do is they go inside the cell and they, there's a receptor inside the cell that binds to the chemical that you're adding. And they, then they go in and turn on certain genes that provide all of this extra cell growth um, and other benefits to the skin. But you have to be careful because if you overdo it, you get really dry skin. And if you get it into places like your eye, it can be really unpleasant. Oh God, that sounds awful. Yeah, don't do that.
Um, they also have an advantage of creating keratin or promoting keratin? Right. So the keratinocytes are lower down in the skin. And so keratin is a super abundant molecule as well that's important, like collagen, for the flexibility. It's an important component of not just your skin, but your hair and your nails as well. And yeah, Retin-A can promote the growth of uh, the keratinocytes that make keratin.